What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be running through how to get the best performance out of Warhammer 40k Darktide. However, I won't be touching on any Windows optimizations. Instead, you'll find a link in the description down below to my Windows 10, Windows 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your PC. The few things that I do have to mention are the most effective. Make sure Windows and your GPU driver are up to date. Close all of your background processes that you don't need while you're playing the game, including including browsers, and of course make sure you turn off any overlays you don't need like River Tuner and the Discord overlay. At this point, we're free to fire up the game and actually get to optimizing it in-game. This game you can optimize from the launch menu, or at least the launcher, that pops up right after you click play. You can choose settings in the bottom left, and we can customize it from here. Note we can customize most of these in-game. So obviously if your screen looks something like this, where you can see your start bar, things are definitely not off to a good start. Hit escape, go to options, then video, and inside of here, immediately, we'll be changing resolution to either our monitor's resolution, which is usually 1080, 2K, or 4K, whatever matches your display and is compatible, anything else will be blurry or wasting processing power for nothing. Screen mode should be set to full screen for the best performance here. Then VSync should be set to off, so we uncap our frame rate, and brightness is your preference. Same goes for field of view, even though you can technically gain FPS by messing around with it, having it good for you is all that matters. Scrolling down to performance, if you have an NVIDIA 20 or newer series graphics card, you can enable NVIDIA DLSS, set this to on, super resolution will leave at automatic, otherwise you can choose one of these options here. The further you go towards performance, instead of quality, the lower the resolution your game will be rendered at, and the more AI magic will need to be used to blow it up to full screen. You'll gain more performance, pushing this higher up, however, you'll also notice more visual artifacting. Usually leaving this on automatic or quality is what I prefer, but you can raise this further. Frame rate cap should be set to unlimited. NVIDIA reflex low latency, you can set to enabled. Otherwise, if your CPU limited, you can set it to enabled plus boost. Frame rate cap should be set to unlimited unless you're recording or streaming it and your game's eating your entire graphics card, leaving nothing for OBS or whatever you're streaming or recording with and you're getting an encoder overloaded issue there. You can come back here and simply lock it to the closest option down from whatever FPS you're getting. If you're getting 140 FPS, lock it to 120, that way whatever you're recording with has space to breathe. Then we have Fidelity FX Super Resolution. FSR shouldn't be used at the same time as NVIDIA DLSS, so you'll need to turn this off if you'd prefer to use it. If you're on an AMD card or one that doesn't support NVIDIA DLSS, I'd recommend enabling AMD FSR 2 and setting it once again to quality, otherwise you can push this up for better performance, but usually more visual artifacts. If you prefer FSR 1.0, you can try it out here. Once again, you should only run one of these at a time, whether it's DLSS, FSR 1, or FSR 2. FSR, as it says, is a cutting edge upscaling technology, and FSR 2 is a temporal upscaling algorithm. While they are similar, they are technically different, and you may get different results using either of these. So pick between these two, once again using quality or balanced, but you can push it further if you need more FPS. For NVIDIA users, DLSS is more than good enough. Sharpening, you would usually leave it set to on as it'll make the game a little bit more crisp, especially if you're using an upscaler such as DLSS or FSR. And the aliasing, you'd usually leave off as well, and it'll automatically be turned off if you're using DLSS or FSR. Anti-aliasing smooths out jagged edges, making them less noticeable, and if you're playing without an upscaler, you may want to use that on one of the lower settings. Then, ray tracing. If you value FPS at all, you'll set this to off. Same goes for ray traced reflections and RTX global illumination. If you have any of these turned on, rest in peace your frame rate, but if you prefer the way the game looks, of course that's your preference. Then graphics preset. You can set this based on what kind of graphics card you have. If it's high end, select high. If it's low end, select low. If you select low, you'll be working up from there. And if you select high, you'll be working down from there. Scrolling down to the advanced graphics, we get some individual options to better tune our FPS and how the game looks. So these options up here, the first three, ambient occlusion, light quality, and volumetric fog, you can drop all the way down to the lowest option. 
However, ambient occlusion you'd probably want to set to low as it still keeps the game looking rather pretty. If you set it to off, you'll notice a drastic drop in visual quality, at least when it comes to shadows and lighting. On higher end PCs, you may only want to lower volumetric fog and maybe light quality as well. Depth of field is something that I hate and I'd usually set this to off. If you have this on and you feel like you need to wear glasses, this is the setting you should be disabling. It can, of course, net you a few extra FPS. Global illumination, you should set to low. And bloom, I'd usually leave on. It has a slight performance impact, but it makes the game look a lot brighter and a lot prettier. Skin subsurface scattering, turn off. And motion blur, you'll probably also want to turn off, especially if you're getting motion sickness. Then screen space reflections, these are practically free on newer hardware as it's a technology that's been done for ages. They're not ray traced or anything. You can set this to medium. Otherwise, if you're absolutely scraping the bottom of the barrel for FPS, you can turn it off. Scrolling down, lens quality, you can set these all to off. Lens flares, once again, off or sunlight only. If you prefer a little bit of extra spice added down here with scatter density, ragdolls, weapon impact decals, blood decals, and decal lifetime. All of these have a pretty large impact on your game, especially the longer that you're playing it. If you find that your FPS drop drastically, these are the options you should come back and lower. You can set these all to zero, of course, but if you like the way something looks and you prefer lots of ragdolls, you can raise it up. If you hover over these, you'll see the first two affect the CPU more than anything, and the last three here affect the GPU more than anything. So depending on what you're limited by, you can come in here and adjust these. If you prefer the way it looks with one of these settings moved around at a higher option, of course, that's your preference. Do as you please here. Then gore settings, once again, this is based off of your preference for the most part. Blood decals, gibbing, and enemy wounds are usually the options that affect your PC the most. Ragdoll interaction can affect your CPU at least a little bit, but can add a little bit of realism or at least more interaction to the game. Gibbing is where enemies split up into multiple parts, and if you prefer this, you can have it on. But it will have a rather large impact on very low-end PCs. Now we're practically done with video settings here. You can head across to the interface tab and customize things as you see fit here, if you haven't already, including the profanity filter at the very bottom. On the audio tab, these are your preference, and the speaker settings option here should be set to whatever you have. Set it to stereo headphones if you're using any kind of headphones, otherwise one of the surround sound options if you have a surround sound setup. Audio mix presets, if you have it set to default, It'll sound pretty much normal. Dynamic high means that there's a big difference between loud sounds and soft sounds. Night mode means there's a very small difference between loud sounds and soft sounds, making it a little bit less harsh, especially if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. You can customize what sounds you have, as well as voice chat volume at the bottom here. It is hidden away unless you scroll. And with that comes the end of this optimization guide. At this point, you should be getting a much better experience. So anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno Behavior Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.